This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host, and here with me today, Al Cochran, the network guy, Professor Capulani Community College. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that's uh, a failure in our system. After 14 years of faithfully serving us, WPA2 Wi-Fi protected access is now broken, and we don't have a replacement. So let's talk about this with Hal right now. Hal, what do you know? What do I know? <laughs> what do you know, man? The, Too much. This is this is called crack. Spelled with a K. Key reinstallation attack. Attack. Right. So it's always been that if I if you wanted to crack someone's Wi-Fi network password, right, you had to you had to lurk around and capture that password when it got it, it got sent around around the network and then take it, run it through some kind of password cracker, which would take time go through brute force or dictionary attacks, trying to guess words until you were able to essentially guess the right password. With, with key reinstallation attacks, don't need it anymore. You don't even need that password. You can insert your own encryption key. So you control the encryption, you can decrypt whatever you want. You don't well, need let's, let's, let's back this up for a minute. For our, for our viewers who don't really know up to this point what we're talking okay. about, well, let's just talk about um, Wi-Fi routers are the central hubs of all Wi-Fi networks, mm -hmm. and we all trust them. Our, our smartphones use them, our laptops use them, uh, all our uh, infer, um, Internet of Things, all the, uh, the webcams, everything, they use these Wi-Fi routers. And the Wi-Fi routers usually have some selections for encryption, so they give you some security in your username and password when you log into the Wi-Fi network. And um, you're usually given, I don't know why these still show up, but WEP, or the in encrypted from way back in the 90s. Yeah, it's that, still there. That's been broken forever. Broken forever. Uh, TKIP, TKIP is an option, but broken in 2009. So there's still options out there, I and I don't know why. But WPA2 uh, appeared in 2004 and has been around just as the standard for all this Wi-Fi for 14 years. All right, I had a marriage that didn't last 14 years. So I, everything comes to yeah, an end deal. eventually. You got, you got to, you got to refresh, and especially with cybersecurity, we tell everybody so many times over and over again, it's a running game. You got to keep moving. The moment you're still for too long, mm -hmm. someone's going to find out how to get to you, and this is one of them. Actually. WPA2, not a bad standard, considering that it held up for 14 years. Yes, that's truly. actually that's a pretty good track record. Solid. Yeah. But it's just inevitable sooner or later with enough people poking at it, you know, you're going to break anything, give it enough time and uh, resource. Right? So there was a standard came out from the IEEE, which does all the standards pretty much for all these electronics. Mm -hmm. um, this is, a, this is a standard that came out in 2000, late 2003, implemented in 2004, I believe, and the, the thing that we're going to be talking about is actually a gap in the actual procedure of executing this standard. Mm -hmm. Somebody didn't think, well, what if this thing happens? What do we do now? And uh, a few, like Windows and iOS, actually thought, well, it's not in the standard, but we're going to do something about it anyway. It wasn't a perfect solution and you can still break it, but at least in Windows and iOS, you're a little safer. Mm -hmm. But in Linux and Android, which are those smartphones out there, uh, it's really bad. So you're going to tell us about that, right? How we do this and why uh, it's so bad. Yeah, so <laughs> the, these, uh, if, you, if you read these papers, these, uh, this paper, the, these researchers that, that uh, discovered this, they actually kind of kind of stumbled on that. They were looking at the standard and uh, without getting too technical, there's this handshake that has to occur between the device and uh, the wireless access point where the encryption key is exchanged. And uh, one of the researchers just said, gee, I wonder what happens if I, just, if I just try to keep refreshing that key over and over. And it found out that, that you can actually ins you can decide what the key will be. You can give it a new key, and it'll be very happy to to accept it and start to use your encryption key. Now, if with encryption, I mean the, the way that it works, it's the key is used to scramble the data so that unauthorized people can't can't read it. Well, if you have the key, guess what? You can read all of the data so and change it. And 
actually, yeah, you, you could actually insert your own data and change, change things and change messages and pretty much own the network and do anything, almost anything that you, that you might want to do. So, so I'm logging in on my Wi-Fi to my bank and the bank hasn't set up good security, mm -hmm. right? You could, using this attack, use or, or use this to get my username and password for my bank account. Hmm? I, I, I could use uh, this vulnerability to set myself up as a man in the middle. So you think you're talking to your bank's website and the, your, your bank's website thinks that they're talking to you but you're really both talking to me. So everything is going through me. So you're you, just passing it on. You send something to the bank, it comes to me. I look at it. Oh, that's very interesting. And then I send it, Pass off, it on. Send it off to the bank. <laughs> the bank sends a response back. I get it first. I look at it. Mm, that's very interesting. And then I send it back to you. And neither side knows that this man in the middle is is lurking there, just just looking at everything that's and the man that's in the middle. That's a classic attack. Mm -hmm. That's a classic attack. Everyone wants to be the man in the middle because it's a complete stealth attack. If no one knows you're there, you are completely invisible, yet you get everything you want. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows they've been attacked, which is the perfect attack. Yeah, if you, if you can get away. So, folks, listen to me. You're never going to hear about the best hackers in the world. Just get over it. The best hackers in the world, you'll never know because they don't want to be known. That's why they're the best. And that's how they stay the best. They're invisible, and they're going to stay that way until they make a mistake, and they're not going to brag about what they do. So if they're the man in the middle and they're a good hacker, you never know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that's perfect. That's exactly the, the success of the man in the middle is not to let anybody know that you're there. As, as soon as you know someone, someone is there, you're going to, oh, well, I, I can't do this. I'm gonna, you know, You've changed something. I'm going to shut this yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> the whole idea is to just lurk there completely unknown, and you can see, it just, just watch until you see what you're looking for, passwords or account numbers or whatever you might. It takes a lot of patience. Yeah, but, but you, you, can sit, you, you can collect uh, that whole stream of data and then, and then go back search and, through the data. And, and, and yeah. search for what you're looking for later. Yeah. And especially in this day of big data, that's what big data is. You mm -hmm. accumulate a massive amount yeah. of data and then you go look for little interesting tidbits. Right? So you could actually do that. And, and use cloud resources to do it. So you wouldn't have Absolutely. to burn your own CPU. Absolutely. <laughs> You're using the modern world to break what you need to break. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, we're doing a handshake, and the handshake is about um, we two devices. We previously are unaware of each other, and now I have to make you aware of me, step one. Mm -hmm. You have to respond, yes, I'm here, and I'm aware of you, and now I'm aware of whatever device I'm trying to contact. This is step two. Step three is where I say, here's a unique number and a little bit more information uh, for you out there in the world. It's a MAC address and a couple other things which we won't go into, but it's the unique identifiers from that computer to scramble up the key and make it harder to break the encryption. I send that to you with my unique number and a sequence number mm -hmm. so you know where in the sequence we are in this handshake. But if somebody intercepts that third step, what happens? What can you do? Every time you send that message with that same sequence number, I accept that key. So you can keep changing my key. You can tell, oh, we're going to use this key now. And so we're using your key. We're using your key. Clearly, you can decrypt everything and see that's it all. being passed. Yeah. Right, right. And the reason this works is because the protocol is set up for things like what we call packet loss. But in the real world, no matter where you're sending data, every once in a while, a piece of that data gets dropped. And if the other end doesn't respond that it got it, you resend it. So that's the protocol's expecting a resend because of packet loss. It's just a natural occurrence that happens everywhere. And that's one of those keys that people took advantage of. So this, do you think this is more of a, an exploit of a gap in procedures, or is this an actual hack? No, it, it, it's, it's more just leveraging and taking advantage of the procedure itself. This was uh, thought to be the strength of WPA and WPA2, was that unlike WEP, right? WEP was the old broken protocol that, that, we, ori that we originally used on Wi-Fi networks. And Wireless before. encryption protocol, WP, and, right. Yeah. And, and was found to be, to, to be very, very weak. It used a, a single encryption key for everybody on the network to share. But oh, the shared the secret, but everybody had it, right? WPA, its strength was every 
device has its own encryption key. So even if we're on the same network, we shouldn't be able to see each other's data. Theoretically, yeah. And these yeah. keys are refreshed periodically. Right? You, you, you don't keep the same key forever. That's what that and unique number that, is, what they call a, a nonce. The refresh right. is exactly what you're talking about, where, where that message gets sent. So, okay, we're going to use this key now. And the wireless device accepts it because, oh, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. WPA refreshes the key periodically because that's thought to be more secure. And because you broke in, you know the sequence number. So yeah, it knows, oh, this is step three again. And you, you, uh, if you've broken that far in, you know the, uh, what they call a number once or a nonce, which mm -hmm. is actually what they call an initialization vector or a salt, uh, a unique number that you add to the key of an algorithm to uniquely encrypt data for just that session. So we're talking about session keys. Mm -hmm. And a session is just as long as we're talking to each other. And the session can end after a length of time, or if I go away and break the session, and that's when that refresh can occur. So we're always looking for that refresh. But if I know that nonce or initialization vector, the reuse of the same salt in that encryption algorithm mm -hmm. is the weakness, mm -hmm. right? We leave what's called Easter eggs. You can see what's going on in there and break that using Cryptanalysis. So, but this is so easy, and the tools came out almost as quick. And I'm not going to tell you what the tools are, so I'm not going to be held liable. <laughs> no, 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 we're not going there. But this is just just uh, kind of poignant, uh, and nobody's really done anything about it. I okay. Tell me if you know. Cisco seems to have patched several devices already. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think one of the the Unix. I think maybe it was BSD. You know, already someone done? that uh, that had patched it, but the the others I'm sure are working feverishly. Feverishly, no, no on lie, patches. Yeah. Now, this uh, th th this patch isn't for the access points; it's for the wireless devices. So every single wireless device, every phone, every tablet, every laptop is going to need to be updated uh, because otherwise they'll they'll remain vulnerable to this this type of an attack. And it's amazing that every single device that we depend on right now for modern life <laughs> Pretty much. is affected by this mm -hmm. this exploit, for lack of a better word. It's, it, this, this crack is going to kill everybody if you don't watch out. How do we defend? We're all hooked on crack. We're all hooked on crack. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I knew that was going to happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but with this, with the, how do we protect ourselves? And uh, we only got a couple of minutes before, before commercial, so let's entice people to come back after the commercial. We'll, we'll okay. ramp up to this. So we, we're going to talk about ways to protect ourselves, even if this is out there mm -hmm. and, and, and can break our encryption, the WPA2. Um, but before we talk about that, let's talk about some things you can do um, as soon as it comes out, if there's a patch you want to, that like patch. an update for Mac OS, an update for Windows, an update for your Android phone. Mm -hmm. If it says this is the patch WPA2, do it. Mm -hmm. Esto importante. It's really, really important that you do this. If you don't, this could happen to you. Uh, exactly, exactly. And so, and, and you should be asking for these patches. I mean, uh, ho hopefully every operating system is working on it. Hound, hound your vendor, right? I don't, I, you know, I'm, you can see I'm a Mac user. Um, I, I use Apple devices. Apple has not fixed this yet. They said it was going to be, and I quote, a couple of weeks. And I thought, yeah. that's kind of leisurely considering yeah, how many things depend on wireless protocols right now. That's, that's bad. iPad, iPhone, iPod. How many iPhones are out there? Oh my if lord, everyone is vulnerable right? To this. And they just, they just put out a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so they got to they patch that already. Okay, let's go to commercial. Let's entice people. We're going to tell you about the, the ways you can protect yourself from this uh, crack attack when we come after, uh, after this commercial. We've got to pay some bills, so be right back. Stay safe. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. 
Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the commercial. Now we're going to go into some safety protocols, but just to warm you up, this is the WPA2 crack, spelled with a K, and it's a, a break in the encryption protocol that allows people to reset the encryption key and play man in the middle and get all your data, replay your data, and even change your data so they can fool people into believing uh, that the hacker is actually you. Very dangerous. Every Wi-Fi system out there right now uses WPA2 in personal and both enterprise editions. And uh, Hal's with me here. Hal, the network guy. <laughs> network guy today. <laughs> network guy today. Uh, let's talk about, um, just to warm people up again, we were talking about uh, what's almost safe and what really isn't safe. And when we talk about the, uh, the, the way WPA2 is implemented is the problem, because the, the actual WPA2 is a, is a good process, but if you implement it incorrectly, there's this egregious error. Now, Windows and iOS, that's from Mac, uh, they implemented this, uh, this standard, WPA2, but they, they varied from the standard in that they said, well, in this certain step where this exploit happens, we're going to do it a different way. And because they did it a different way, they're more secure than Linux, a little bit. unfortunately. A little bit more secure. A little bit more secure, and of course, Android. And Linux Which and Android Linux, yeah. are wide open to this because of? It makes sense because open, open source, they're going to follow the standards meticulously. Oh, that's true. And Both they, open follow, source. they follow the standards, and so they got, uh, unfortunately, the biggest exposure to this because yeah. the standard itself is broken. So on uh, Linux-based devices, Android-based uh, um, devices, you can actually, this can be used to set your encryption key to zero. Just basically zero it out. Something tells me that would, wouldn't actually be a, an encryption key, because when you multiply no, by zero, you kind of, get zero. Yeah. yeah, so you basically get zero for an <laughs> encryption key. So it's basically, basically disabled. You just nulled it out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's void, right? Did, it's, <laughs> That doesn't sound like a good solution at all. So now I get to look for all my Linux machines. Now I get to look for this fix. And uh, for Android, uh, especially version six and beyond, um, Linux and Android in those versions were uh, using what do they call it? WPA supplicant, which I today have not heard of until just this morning. Well, that never was a library, that. right? That they. they, they it's did. just one of the code libraries that that helps yeah. them work with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And two, it was an open source. 2.4 and beyond was the version of this uh, supplicant that needs to be upgraded. So if you're looking for an upgrade for Linux and your Android phone, the WPA underscore supplicant 2.4 or greater is affected. So you need to upgrade whatever you had to something they're coming out with to fix it. And that sounds so weird. Such a weird word. Uh, supplicant. We should probably explain that, <laughs> that in, in the terms of of WPA in, the, in this four-way handshake, the supplicant is what the wireless device is called when it's contacting the access point, setting up the encryption and setting up the network access. The other party in the handshake, yeah. yeah. Not, it's not a Game of Thrones it's, thing. It's yeah. the supplicant <laughs> and the authenticator. So right. the access point is, is the authenticator and the wireless device is the supplicant. So we got to talk about how to protect ourselves now. And uh, VPN is a big topic that everyone's going on right now. The good news is that if you're using some additional type of encryption, right, and if you're not just relying on the wireless network's encryption, then you, you would certainly be much, much better off. You'd, you'd be fairly safe. So as long as you make sure that uh, the websites that you're connecting to use strong uh, SSL-based uh, encryption, then you should be you should be okay. So let's, for our people out there that are uh, listening, that means uh, you're looking for HTTPS mm -hmm. in the URL in your browser. HTTPS as opposed to and, HTTP. Right, and they use Secure Socket Layer or SSL. Mm -hmm. 
And they also add a kind of a, an addition to that TLS or Transport Layer Security 1.2, which is the latest, and that adds even more security, uh, like uh, new algorithms like AES and stuff like that. So you can do that and encrypt the, the data going back and forth. So even if they break this and reset your key, the data that's between the two people, you and that yeah, website, is still encrypted. This encryption, the, the, the SSL uh, encryption, is, that, is that a a whole different l layer. It's, a, it's a, at, a, at a much higher layer. The, the encryption that, that's being broken is that is at the network layer. So it's, 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 it's very low level. The SSL encryption is at a much higher layer. L layer. So it will still offer you some protection, even if the, the network level uh, encryption, you know, Turns out, turns out, turns out to be broken. And usually, if if uh, if you're using uh, an HTTPS site, there's some kind of a there's a lock or some kind of an icon that green light, will, that red will light here yeah. uh, in the browser to to tell you that yes, this is a secure connection as as opposed to just being you know a wide open plain. And there's one in the middle too, right? You can get the green lock or whatever the indicator. There's different. And there's levels. a red one that says no, the security is invalid. Yeah. But there's an in between. Which you can get a lot of times, like which a yellow one. Yeah, the the one with the little yellow triangle, uh, which usually indicates something really simple, like uh, the pictures are coming from another folder on the website yes. that's not in the secured zone of the website, but they're putting it on your web page. But those pictures are not actually encrypted. Everything else, the packets you're getting are encrypted. So, nah, it's better than nothing. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to kill yourself it, with it. It, it helps. Even better than that would be to use a virtual private network. Uh, if, if, if you're using a virtual private network, then you've got complete, you have complete end-to-end -end encryption of your data. And again, this is at a much higher level. So even if the network level encryption uh, it is vulnerable, you'll still have a, a layer of protection there but if you're so using a VPN. Tell me if you, if you agree with me on this one. I, I need to use a VPN. I need to know who I can trust. Because if I'm going to that VPN and from then I go to all my other sites, everything I do is going through that VPN provider. Oh. And that VPN theoretically could see everything I'm doing, just it's, like an attacker. It's, it's the trust model. The, every trust model, you have to trust the, the highest authority. It's like, it's like the certificate authorities. If you don't trust them, then none of the certificates they issue can be trusted. So at some point, you have to just trust whoever is at the top of that chain. So what I would recommend is do some research, do some Googling. There are, I, I, I found a lot of sites out there that will, that will rate different VPN providers and, and list the, the advantages, disadvantages of each one. Look, look for one that gets really good reviews that you know, uh, people have been you know, using for a long, long time and trust and are happy with. And you may have to pay a, a little bit of a subscription fee to you know to get into a good one, but you usually get what you pay for, and it, if it if it saves you you know having identity theft and your yes, bank account something hacked, like that, it's, yeah. well, it's well worth a small subscription fee. <laughs> yeah, really, five bucks a month or whatever they, they charge, whatever. I think Norton has one. Um, the ones that I wouldn't trust that anything by Equifax, if they came out with a VPN, <laughs> I think I, I might rethink that. Um, unfortunately, some of the organizations I in my federal just government. I, just VN. <laughs> it's just, I, I think it's just a virtual network. Key, really. <laughs> There's no privacy. <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, uh, folks, if you haven't already, go out there and lock, uh, or not lock, uh, freeze your credit records. Uh, and all of the three major credit organizations uh, go through that process. It might cost you a couple of dollars. However, it's going to be tremendously beneficial in the long run not to have your identity stolen. You just want to keep yourself safe. So go freeze your credit records. And then when you go to websites, look for the HTTPS. Uh, is that lock? When you see that uh, that green lock or whatever your browser says that that's a good certificate, you can use that site. Um, if you don't see that lock, by no means put anything valuable in, information-wise in a browser at that point. You don't want in your records. You don't want a username and password. And I've seen this on a lot of websites. Unfortunately, there's a there's a lag in uh, knowledge about this stuff with web developers. So that when they make login pages, I've actually seen the login pages to a website, HTTP. Mm -hmm. You're entering your username and password, and when you click Submit, then you go to the, the secure site. But in the meantime, 
anybody on using Wireshark sitting at Starbucks with you, they're going to know your username, username and password because you just put that in the open. Mm -hmm. And that's a poor implementation. So when you go to log into whatever site you're going to log into, like Amazon or maybe your bank, uh, make sure your credentials, when you're entering them, at that time, before you click submit, you should have HTTPS in the top. Look for that first. Look for that green lock before you even put in your username. Or that password. is really good advice. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, I write the emails, then I put who I'm going to send it to, mm -hmm. so I don't click send before. Accidentally. Uh, accidentally, because I've done that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, that's bad. I've actually CC'd some people that I shouldn't have CC'd. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. By the way, email also not encrypted. Uh, yes, yeah. email is not a Wide secure, open. so be careful what you put in. Now, in there's, a, um, there's an organization here in the islands that encrypts emails, mm -hmm. POW Box, P-A-U Box, and it's, it's going national. They're a really great provider, and uh, I think I'm gonna be signing up with them pretty soon, and it's, yeah. it's relatively inexpensive, and it's one of those things like a VPN, it's well worth it. Now, you and I, we work for UH, University of Hawaii, so we get the VPN for free. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some benefits of being a teacher. It's kind of cool. Uh, but other people have to pay for this stuff, and you just got to make your own decision. Like you said, it's a trust model. Who do you trust? Uh, and speaking of trust, let's take a quick uh, tour into the Netherlands really quick. We just uh, came up with a story that they took a very close look at Windows 10, and we knew this was happening over here, but they're really mad about it. Uh, the du Dutch Protection Authority, the DPA, the DPA actually exists, and uh, they, they, they took a look at Windows and they found that they were, of course, collecting data and shipping it off to Windows. And Windows, I think, uses this to make itself better. That's what they say. You know, we're, we're making this a better system. But the laws in uh, the Netherlands say you have to tell the user what their data is being used for. And you have to give them uh, an option not to send that data. Mm -hmm. And they're doing neither one of those. And so the Dutch Protection Authority is saying either you change or you're not going to do business in this country. And uh, the, the new rules throughout Europe uh, are coming out uh, very soon to be strictly enforced and include provisions that are very much like this one. But we in this country signed on to the Patriot Act in 2002, and I advise everyone, go read that. I know it's... It's legislation, it's hard to read, but if you read that, you would not have been surprised by what Verizon was doing that Snowden told us they were doing. You would have just said, yeah, I know, that was law. Um, most of those provisions, by the way, expired. We were talking about that, but some of them didn't, so they, they're still out there. So our data can be collected without our consent in this country, which is kind of a scary thing. And in, in, in some cases, it uh, has to be. It's not that it, just that it can be those, those uh, Telecom companies are required. They're required to, to collect, collect that information. Yeah, uh, and then it could be gone through at any time. Mm -hmm. Ah, your tax dollars at work, ladies and gentlemen, and more good news from the cyber underground. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> See you next week. Until then, stay safe.